Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isratel here today. People have told me that I say my last name too fast and might not even know it, but I studied it real hard and I pronounced it. Today, we are going to talk about how to gauge how many reps in reserve you are in hypertrophy training so that you can figure out how far from failure you are and perhaps get better at the training process. It's a much maligned thing, this RIR. A lot of times people say, you know, I really just don't know if I'm at three reps in reserve or one rep or five. How do I tell? We've got first some tips as to how you can tell. And then we actually have tips as to why being super accurate isn't really that necessary. So let's get into it. First of all, what is reps in reserve and why is it? RIR, reps in reserve, it's essentially how many reps you have in the tank with good technique until you reach what's called technical failure. Like if you have to wiggle or something like that or break your, break your form, break your technique, doesn't count. So it's how many reps you have until you have uh, all the way to technical failure. And generally speaking, this is a concern to us at all because research has found over and over and over again, and also most uh, people who train for hypertrophy have found this to be very true in their own training, that anything relatively close to failure, about three reps in reserve and closer, is just really effective for hypertrophy. And the opposite is not true, that anything further than three reps away from failure, it's just much less effective. So if you stop all of your sets at like six reps in reserve, you just don't get very good hypertrophy relative to if you go closer. The good news is, is that anything between three reps in reserve and going all the way to failure or, or close to zero reps in reserve, research can't even tell apart if it's any better. So we know for a fact that for most people, it's just not that big of a difference, if any difference at all. But at least you got to be able to tell if you're around three reps in reserve or significantly more or less than that. So why is gauging reps in reserve important? For a couple of reasons. If we train at more than three reps in reserve consistently, and that means further away from failure, like six reps away from failure, then we just aren't training hard enough to maximize gains. Uh, this has been confirmed in beginners. There's a couple of studies and one really, really important one that basically showed that you take beginners and you tell them, hey, go to failure and tell us when you have like one or two reps left in the tank. And they do benches or squats or something and they get really tired and go, okay, I, like, I have like one more left. And then the researchers start yelling at them like crazy, really get under their skin. They don't help them, but they really, really motivate them. More, 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 do one more, you got it. And a lot of folks got like five and 10 reps more after that. It was really insane. So we know that beginners underestimate how close to failure they are. It's probably not as true for advanced inter uh, intermediate individuals, but you just don't want to be one of these people that thinks they're going really close to failure. And then you actually get pushed by someone who you maybe you trained with an old training partner that came back and he really pushed you on the leg press. Like, I got sets of 15 last time, and this time I got sets of 22. Uh, I thought I was two reps in reserve last time. That just clearly wasn't true unless I gained like five reps of strength. I don't know where, which I didn't. So you don't want to be that person that's just not been training hard enough. So it's good to make sure you know RIR relatively well. If you can't tell on the other end what like three reps in reserve is versus like what zero is, then you may be training too hard all the time. And that's not the bad thing. It just accumulates a lot of fatigue. Let's say week one of a mesocycle, you want to push hard, but not too hard. So you have something to save for the later weeks. And you know, your program says like, we should be about three reps in reserve. If what you think is three reps in reserve is actually like one rep in reserve, then you're just going to peter out and accumulate a ton of fatigue after two or three weeks and wonder why you're not making excellent gains and wonder why you're so tired and wonder why you can't make PRs. We've all been around people who like will ask us to watch a set or a spot and they're like, I'm going for like three reps in reserve. Got it? You're like, sweet. And then they get to like, oh, the bar like basically stops and they grind out the last rep and then they rack and they turn around. They're like, pretty good, right? And you're like, I'm pretty sure that was zero reps in reserve, man. They're like, no, 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 I had a couple more. Like, no, you didn't, you liar, right? We don't want to be that person because we're setting ourselves up for essentially just a lot of well, suboptimal training and a lot of surprises of like, oh man, I'm too much, too fatigued to keep going. Why? What's well, because you've been pushing too hard for way too long. So we need to be able to tell a couple of things, really three things. One, about what three reps in reserve looks like, because that's our sort of bottom threshold for hard enough training. We need to be able to tell what about zero reps in reserve looks like, because we, we should know when, you know, when next week would be like no bueno or when one more rep would just fall on us, especially for things like the squat. And Bonus round is it's good to be able to tell a little bit between those two, some sort of sort of internal discrimination there where like, you know, it's good to be able to tell what three and one rep in reserve is. It's good to be able to tell between two and zero reps in reserve, anywhere between those two and one reps in reserve. You may not very accurately be able to tell, but you should have an inkling of like, is this three or is this two or is this one? At least you'd be able to have a good guess versus just being like, it's either three 
or zero, or I have no idea. So it pays to know what RIR are you at. So what are some ways to gauge RIR? What are some good tips? Well, the first thing is the tips we're gonna say in point number two here, don't apply to everyone equally. There's a really big range of differences in how people experience reps and reserve. Some people, for example, on the point of velocity, we know bar velocity, and we'll talk about that in a sec, bar velocity is a very, very good way to tell how many reps you have in the tank. Essentially, when the bar starts to slow down, it probably means you're roughly three reps in reserve or so. The thing is, for some people, they go completely, and a lot of times very strong, very big people that are very fast twitch and have athletic backgrounds, they'll move the weight at about the same speed, and then they'll hit zero reps in reserve, and it'll still look great, and they'll, uh, they'll fail and just falls on them. And you're like, what the hell? Your bar speed was amazing this entire time. How is it you just went to failure? And then there's other folks usually smaller people, usually more slow twitch people that like their last seven reps of a set looks like insane grinders. And then they just keep going. And you're like, all right, three more. And they just do three like, ah, ah. And then they're like four and five and six. You're like, holy crap. Like, first of all, it's miserable to be you because you can just keep going. But also, you know, what my guess at what your three R was, was pretty wrong. So everything in between those two is also true. So we have to take these things with grains of salt and a lot of this comes down to learning your own body, and this can be different muscle to muscle. Like, you know, your biceps might just stop completely at a halt. Your triceps might be able to grind stuff. So you have to have some nuance when you're approaching these. But in general, here are some helpful tips. Around three reps in reserve, you begin to experience the following things, usually on average. So again, you have to learn your body to really figure this out. We'll talk about later how to do that. The bar speed will begin to notably slow. So if you're doing benches, it's like, boom. Boom, Ugh. okay, that first time it slows down on you, you know, you're not six reps in reserve in most cases. And the first time it starts to slow down on you, in most cases, it's not like that's it, that sets over, zero RIR. You, once the bar slows down, you probably have a few more reps left, a few more, like three, right? Second, in especially higher rep sets, lactic acid accumulation and the burn will sort of ramp like this. So it'll be like sort of sustainable, feels pretty good. And then right around three reps in reserve around there, the burn starts to get really crazy. And you're like, ah, this sucks, right? Another good tip. And if you note those together, both velocity and burn, now you have two measurements, you have a more accurate big picture. You know, if the velocity starts to slow down, but there's no burn, are you really three reps in reserve? Maybe. If the other happens, if there's a burn, but no velocity to slow down, then you got more reps. But if they both start to happen, you start to think, okay, I'm getting pretty close to failure, maybe about three reps in reserve. Another uh, indicator is that a lot of focus needs to be required to keep good technique. You might have your technique locked in place, but when you get to that 3RR mark, your body just starts to push. Like you might be able to keep your elbows in on a close grip bench. When you start getting close to three reps in reserve, you start to flare your elbows unconsciously. And you have to be like, okay, 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 okay. I really just got to focus. Okay, really focus and really push at the same time. It gets really, really tough because your body essentially at 3RR starts to go into survival mode of like, I just have to get this weight off of me. Okay, so if you, your technique normally comes easily to you and you don't have trouble focusing on it, when you push closer to failure through reps and reserve or so, you're gonna start to be like, oh wow, like I really need to keep a cap on my technique, otherwise it just goes to hell. And lastly, and this is uh, something that for intermediates and advanced lifters, they're very good at perceiving, beginners are gonna have a tough time perceiving this, which is one of the reasons why we don't even tell beginners to go to failure, is you're gonna experience uh, a sense of sort of psychological and local weakness in the muscle and in the movement that you're doing. Kind of a, a good way to describe it would be that the weight is pushing back at you more. Like, you know, you're doing, again, bench is the easy example because I'm sitting here in a chair, right? You're doing bench and it's like, whoosh, you're just in charge. You're moving the weight. And then three RIR, and this exactly correlates to that velocity decline, feels like the weight just kind of got heavier. It's like, ooh, like the weight really starts to just grind back at you. You're like, all right, wait, I see you. <laughs> you know, it's no longer like, you're no longer winning the battle. It's like 50-50. And eventually at failure, you lose the battle, right? So in another way, like three RIR somewhere, taking all these things together where it feels like shit starts to hit the fan. Like it feels, cause you know, if you do something like six RIR, 10 reps in reserve, 10 reps away from failure, you can hypothetically feel like, like I could just do this forever, right? You're like, bop, 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 bop. this is super easy. But when you hit three RIR, that's the sort of the first time that you realize, man, you know, like this, I'm not gonna be able to do this forever. The time is ticking for me. So taking all these things together can be a really, really good way to estimate when you're maybe around three RIR. 
right? And of course, all the lower reps in reserve, two reps in reserve, one reps, they will occur a rep or two or a few reps past that point. So zero RIR is the easy to tell. That's when you're pretty sure that the next rep won't make it. And that of course also requires practice because sometimes you can be positive the next rep won't make it, but you make it and then you try another one, you make that one as well. But after lots of years of training and you know months and years of experience, you start to know like, especially in things like squats, like when that last rep, your quads come up and they do this thing for a second and then they finally come up and you're full body lactic acid at this point, you're breathing super heavy. Like, you know, that next rep is a real, real gamble, right? So that's zero reps in reserve because it's a little bit different than failure. Failure is actually when you fail the last rep. Zero reps in reserve is when you know your last rep is going to be failed. And another good way to, to tell that you're at zero RIR is that not only do you feel like you can't do another rep, but that last rep you did seemed to just take everything to do. Like you, your curl was like, you just put your entire soul into that thing and it barely moved. And ask yourself, can I really do another one of these? Probably not, right? That's zero RIR. We'll talk about in a bit how zero RIR actually isn't very important to perceive in most exercises because you have proper spotters and proper racks. It's okay to go to failure and you'll find out whether or not your zero RIR was real or not. But the three RIR, pretty important to figure out, right? Now, pretty important does not mean all important. And it turns out that RIR gauging doesn't need to be super precise because folks really perseverate on this issue like crazy. People will say like, I can never tell three RIR versus four RIR or versus two RIR. Like I have to be able to tell. There's a good reason why you don't and here's why. All you need to do is get around generally the vicinity of three reps in reserve at the beginning of your hypertrophy mesocycle. If that's four reps, you're fine. If that's two reps, you're fine. And here's why. After you guess three reps in reserve, whatever weight and reps you hit, you're gonna add a little bit of weight or add a little bit of reps next time. That's it, in your next week, in your next session, however you periodize. And as you add weight and or reps based on a planned strategy, what's gonna happen is you're either gonna get stronger forever, which is amazing and will never happen, or you will just eventually reach failure. And then you rinse, repeat, you deload, and then start that process all over again. So in essence, you really only ever need to guess three RIR like once. It's not a weekly thing where you have to be like, all right, this week's target is two RIR and I gotta guess it exactly. And if I don't get it, something wrong is gonna happen. Because you start at three RIR and because you're making things a little bit harder each time, eventually you will get to zero RIR and you'll look back on your mesocycle and be like, okay, trained from roughly three reps in reserve all the way to zero, that's the definition of great training. Whether you got that there in four weeks or five weeks or six weeks is really just not that big of a deal. It's just not that big of a deal. Now, the ability to have a decent guess at 3RIR at the beginning of the cycle does pay off. So it does matter, right? We don't wanna say, oh, it doesn't matter. Eventually you'll get to failure anyway, it'll be good. Well, if what you thought was 3RIR was really 8RIR, you mesocycle could be eight weeks instead of five and the first three are just a total fucking waste of time because you trained so easily that you got almost no gains. We definitely don't want that to happen. And if you think your three RR is really your zero RR, your mental cycle might now be two weeks long instead of five. And that's no bueno because you just spent a whole lot of time not accumulating. You have to deal with a whole bunch, so that's not really good. And not only does it help to know what your three RR roughly is, it helps to know like, are you on track towards two RR or one RR? So for example, let's say it's your second week of training and you did three RIR-ish in your first week and you want these next reps uh, and weights to be like roughly at two RIR or so. If you do add five pounds of weight to the bar and you finish the set like, uh, rack, match my reps, added five pounds, be like, you know that wasn't two RIR. And it turns out you're getting stronger faster and yeah, you could extend the length of your mesocycle and just keep going. But sometimes when you have a predetermined mesocycle length, which a lot of people do, then you know like, okay, actually I have to do more reps or put a little bit more weight on the bar because it was clearly not two RIR. And the same thing with one RIR. So it's good to have just a real basic real world gauge of if you're still at three or even have dropped and now at four RIR, or if you're like way too aggressive because sometimes you have three weeks left and it says you're supposed to do two RIR, whatever planned progression you had, like you added 10 pounds to the bar and you almost got to failure. You're like, gee, that's like zero RIR. Maybe next week I won't add any weight and I'll see if the RIR goes back to one or two and thus I'll buy myself an extra week. So you definitely wanna have a real world, just kind of a gut check 
of what RIR you're at every time you train, but it doesn't have to be super precise because of that match or beat system, which we have another video, by the way, on that, how to use the match or beat system. And uh, that takes care of almost everything, right? So final recommendations. You wanna do a good job estimating your three RIR based on the criteria we mentioned, velocity, lactic acid, perception of the weight pushing back at you, and so on and so forth. You begin the mesocycle, you add load and or reps slowly but surely and steadily until you reach failure several weeks later. Now, through that time and looking back during uh, that whole mesocycle, you wanna note how your three RIR estimates felt, like how they felt as far as how much lactic acid there was, how much the bar slowed down, and you wanna sort of remember that. You want to note how you felt each week after that, all right? How two-ish RIR felt, or so you thought. How one-ish RIR felt, and so you thought. And you want to note how long you were able to progress. If you were able to progress for like six weeks, yeah, your first week was probably not three RIR. It was probably like four or five. If you were able to progress for two weeks, your first week was probably not three RIR unless you somehow got, got crazy fatigue out of nowhere. And you want to note what zero RIR felt like and what failure felt like, especially the reps coming up to failure at the end of the progression, you're gonna take all that information, you're gonna use it to inform your next mesocycle. Because you remember how three RIR felt and you know how accurate it was based on how far you were able to go, in the next meso, when you're doing your first week, you have better information on where to stop because you're now wiser as to where three RIR really is based on your last mesocycle of experience. Also, you know a little bit better how quickly or slowly to add load or reps to target the RIRs you want. Because essentially you want to go from three RIR, one or two weeks, and then two RIR, one or two weeks, and one RIR, one or two weeks, and zero RIR, slash failure. How do you know how much weight or reps to jump? Well, experience, right? The last mezzo, you try to jump 10 pounds on the leg press and you end up grinding to failure two weeks early. Next meso, you might jump by seven and a half or by five. And all of a sudden, you plan it super, super well. So a lot of training wisdom comes from knowing how many reps or how much weight you can add on each exercise and how many RIR steps does that equate to? Does adding 10 pounds go from three RIR to two RIR or does adding 10 pounds go from three to zero RIR? Because knowing that, you know, on dumbbell curls, you're not gonna add 10 pounds. You don't, you don't curl the 40s and curl the 50s next week and be like, oh, weird, I, I didn't even match my reps. Like, I'm beyond failure. Like, that's ridiculous because you know you don't put 10 pounds. That's not that rep in reserve. One rep in reserve difference is not 10 pounds for curls, but it could be 10 pounds for deadlifts. It could even be 20 for deadlifts, right? So gaining that wisdom is a really big part. So you always pay attention but you don't overthink the stuff, you're just doing a good job, and then after the meso is over, you look back and say, okay, was I progressing too quickly? Was I progressing too slowly, right? And here's the thing, don't sweat the details. If you're two RIR, four RIR, you can always make adjustments within the meso. If one set was way too easy, you can put on more weight on the next set, or just do a few more reps, no big deal. I wouldn't try to go crazy, crazy, crazy with, okay, I gotta hit everything two RIR today. And if I'm not hitting two RIR, I gotta adjust everything. If it's challenging, if it's less than three RIR, between three and zero, do your shit, match your weight and reps, or go up by a little bit. Next workout, do a little bit more. That way you'll keep going up and eventually you'll have awesome success. Don't sweat it, you'll get better over time. Not just get more muscle over time, but you'll get better at estimating all these RIRs and eventually it'll be super, super second nature. Folks, thank you for tuning in. See you next time. I'll practice my last name more.